if you have like two parts on a song that you really are having trouble with just those two parts, do you just practice them slowly ad nauseum over and over again, just those two parts? Or do you try to go through the whole song and just make sure you're good? Like, how do you fix a couple so, of parts that are still bad? If it's two parts that I'm having problem first, and when you find that, well, you're not having problem with an entire song, just two sections, it's good to sort of go in with a microscope and see, why am I having problem with this song? Is it technique related? Which means, do I need to change some fingerings to find a better fingering? Especially if you're slipping, that's usually a big indicator that maybe I need to look into some alternate fingering. Mm -hmm. If it, um, is it a memory thing where whenever I get here, I'm sort of just blank. I spaced out for a yes. second or two. I don't know mm -hmm. what comes next. Well, that means it's theoretical. We need to be thinking about what's going on theoretically with the song. What section of the song is this? Is it a part of the verse, part of the chorus, part of the bridge? What's happening there? What's the progression? Am I changing key? Is it a non-diatonic chord? If so, what is it? You know, laid out, understanding it from a theoretical perspective so the brain is clear on what's coming up next. Because if we just say, oh, it's this weird chord coming up, and that's all the analysis <laughs> we have done with it, that's not really enough to give the brain information so it can plan ahead. And so we have to analyze what's going on there. Is it a theoretical problem? Is it a physical, technical problem? Because if we don't, and we just kind of do it by rote, we may get it a couple of times correctly. But again, once the route memory goes, we don't know what's coming up next. And that's why I tell every folk, every person that you need to be able to sit and mentally walk yourself through an entire song that you're playing. So any song that I'm working on, I can sit and I can recite the chords like a poem, both numerically and chord letter names, just recite it. And that's a good exercise you can do away from the piano to test how well do I know this song? That will help to alleviate the mental block once you're able to recite it. And then from there, we just gotta figure out is it a physical thing? You know, do I need to jump and get there sooner? If it's black key, probably I need to flatten my fingers a little more because sometimes if we try to curve on black keys, it gets slippery and will slide. So we play black keys more flat. You know, do I need to turn my wrist a little? Do I need to probably move my, my, my entire torso over if it's more into the low end of the piano or in the upper? And so, you know, we're really looking at it like a scientist. What's going on here? Um, because oftentimes when someone says something is hard, it's hard because we haven't analyzed why. Some things are physically hard on the piano, but a lot of things you guys are capable of playing if we just spend some time analyze why we find it difficult. Because sometimes the difficulty is, lies in one of these things that I just l mentioned. And once we're able to analyze that and then address that, you find that you can actually play things relatively complex that you didn't think you were able to. It's just that we, at, at every level, we have to think about the piece differently. And the higher you get in the complexity of the songs you're doing, the more analysis is required. You can't just rely on rote memory. So that's how I would treat those two spots. And then you go the play it a million times until you get it under your finger. But first, we want to know why we're slipping.